coral reefs of the Red Sea form an extraordinary diverse ecosystem shining with all colors of the rainbow. Thousands of divers come here every year, attracted by colorful fish and corals. I carry out my research here for two years now, and I am interested in fish which are often overlooked by the divers because they are small and inconspicuous. We are in Dahab, Egypt, on the outer side of the coral reef called the Islands. Near the sandy bottom, at a depth of about 60 meters, grow numerous bushes of the Acropora corals. This is the habitat of an unusual species of fish belonging to the Gobidi family. Branninops natans Body length of adult fish of this species does not exceed 4 cm, so it's easy to overlook them on the reef. Their coloration is quite unusual, a transparent body, yellow internal organs and big, pinkish-violet eyes. Braninops natans is a habitat specialist. It occurs only together with few particular species of Acropora corals. In Latin the name natans means floating. The fish usually hover above the corals, catching plankton carried with the water current. This hovering makes them unique species among gobbits because most members of this family spend their lives sitting on the substrate. The aim of my research is to determine if Brianinops natans are suitable for keeping in aquariums and to find out what conditions do they need to reproduce in captivity. Last year I studied and described in detail the habitat of the gobies. This year I started the preliminary monitoring of their behavior. For two weeks, every morning I set up the recording equipment at one and the same site, occupied by a single group of Brianinops natans. A small tripod laden with lead and a small camera fitted with an additional power supply. Original battery of the camera lasts for about one hour of recording. For my purposes it was far too short. The underwater housing of the camera had to be modified to allow the connection of the external power source. 12 volt gel battery and AC car cigarette lighter adapter, both sealed in a piece of plumbing pipe, perfectly fulfilled their task. With this additional power supply, the camera could record constantly for more than 12 hours. Because dozens of divers visit the island's reef every day, I had to use a piece of strong chain and two padlocks to prevent any non-planned change of the owner of my equipment. Every day I repeated the same procedure. In the morning I set up the equipment and in the afternoon I dived again to stop the recording and to remove the equipment from the water. Just some minor adjustments of the camera position and I can start another day of recording. Here is a typical view from the monitoring camera. In total I managed to record about 90 hours of raw video material. For most of the time gobies float above Acropora and feed on plankton particles carried by water current. However, there are more dramatic moments in their lives. This is probably the worst danger, attack of predators. The dark fish with whiskers on its chin is a goatfish Parupeneus cyclostomus. It is accompanied by two female bird races, Gomphosus ceruleus. 
These two species of fish often hunt together, causing real terror among the small inhabitants of the reef. Please note the reaction of gobies. They hit among the branches of the Acropora and there is not a single trace of them left. Another case. Again contact with the larger fish, but this time it is one of the damselfish from Pomacentride family. You can see the difference in the behavior of gobies. They flee, but they do not hide between the branches of Acropora. Apparently, they know very well that the intruder doesn't feed on small fish. And finally, changing of the roles. Now it is the goby who will be an aggressor. A pair of butterfly fish Hetodon paucifasciatus swims onto the stage. One of them is too inquisitive, it swims too close and gets a slap from the goby. Let's look at this scene in slow motion. The gobby sticking close to the left side of the Acropora behaves as if guarding something and that is why it drives away the butterfly fish. This indicates that the gobbies cope very well with the recognition of other reef inhabitants and that they do change their behavior depending on who they are confronting. This fragment also made me realize that single gobbies guarding one and the same branch of Acropora are indeed to be encountered on the reef from time to time. Why are they doing it? I started to look closer at such Nathan's guarded branches of Acropora. With the unaided eye, however, not much could be seen. Only after applying macrophotography I discovered that there are fish eggs laid on those branches of Acropora. Eggs probably belonging to the gobies. I was even lucky enough to record the moment of hatching. One little fish escapes quickly into the water. Let's see this moment again in slow motion. For now I am not sure if the eggs indeed belong to the gobies. Perhaps it is some other species of fish which deposits its eggs on Acropora branches and the gobies treat such places only as a snack bar. To find an answer to that question I would have caught the gobies at the moment of spawning. I'm sure there are many interesting facts to be discovered about Brianinops natans, so next year I will share the return to Dayhab to continue observations of the small gobies from the Red Sea.